Statistics and Excel. Wages data, box plot, or box and whiskers versus histogram. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You can either go back to a prior presentation where we basically built this practice problem from a blank sheet, starting with a blank sheet from there, or you can create your own data set as we focus in on the creation of a histogram for this part of the practice problem. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice having pre-formatted cells in it so you can focus on the heart of the presentation. The blank tab is where we build everything from, in essence, a blank sheet with just some raw data to start out with. Let's go to the example on the left-hand side. In prior presentations, we've taken our raw data of simply the wages and we created the box and whisker to get a visual representation of it. Then we did some calculations to try to identify some areas of the box and whisker. Now we wanna create the other uh, type of graph, which is quite common to be visualizing, that being the histogram. Now in Excel, histograms are great to be able to, to use because they give you a really good uh, kind of spread of the data. And so now I think it would be a little bit more difficult prior to having Excel to obviously chart things out in a histogram format by hand and the box and whiskers might be a little bit easier uh, by hand, but they both have their uses and we can compare and contrast them. We'll be doing a lot more work with different kinds of histograms to see how data plots on the histogram in future presentations. Let's go to the blank tab. We have a little bit different format uh, at this point because we added some of the numbers on the box and whiskers, for example, but the general idea being the same. We've got the data on the left. We created the box and whiskers. The way we created the box and whiskers is we simply just selected the entire uh, data, which you could do with the drop down like this. We went to the insert, uh, that's the tab up top. We went to the charts, and in this drop down, you'll note that that's the home of both the histograms and the box and whiskers because those are going to be applied to similar two similar kind of uh, methods or two methods that will have uh, similar usage and so they kind of grouped those things together we put in our histogram last time and then we did some formatting to the histogram so remember our data represents basically just uh, wages that we might see at a company and now Let's add the second bit, which, which is gonna be the histogram. Now note, if you don't have this data wages, you can look up wages if you want to. Uh, you can also use a random generator. So if you wanted to have random wages and then add a few outliers just to have some data to work with, you could say equals random and then random between. And our data set is basically between like, I don't know, 65,000 and then comma, and the top is like 75,000. So if you used a random generator, Excel can do that. Random numbers between that point, those points, copy it down, and then maybe add some outliers, right? Would this one be like 85,000? Now it's outside of the range. So obviously it's great to have real data because our goal is statistics is to try to oftentimes see what the difference is between the random data set and the actual data set in real life to give some glean some insights as to what's going on with the data. That's one of our strategies, of course, which we'll talk about more later, but that's one way to generate some data if you just wanna then practice putting in a histogram. Once you have your data, we could select the data. You can highlight the data this way, dragging down. If you have the table a data in a table format, you can put your cursor on the top of the table, select this way. Uh, uh, you can also put your cursor on it and hold down control shift, and that'll take you down to the bottom of the data set. If you wanna go back up, you can hold down control and backspace, not delete backspace. And that's another nice way. Note that you'd like to be at the top of the data set usually when you're gonna be inserting the whatever uh, charts or graphs you're gonna put in 
Otherwise, the charter graph will be showing at the bottom and you're going to have to pull it up to the top, right? So I want to be up here because I want to be able to pull the graph like right around here, okay? So I'm going to say, all right, let's, let's go ahead and uh, now insert tab up top. 